All right, to everyone in the United States of America, happy 4th of July. To everyone not in the United States of America, happy World Cup. Just not for us. All right, here we are, all the way back in the month of June. June 21st, to be precise, at Pandemonium Books and Games in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's a Netrunner Regional Championship Tournament. On the left, Chris. On the right, Chris. Chris is going to win, I guarantee. I guarantee Chris is going to win this game. Look at those playmats. Neither of them deserve to lose with that kind of playmat going on. Andromeda Chris. Chris M. Drawing nine cards. Man, don't you wish you had nine cards in your hand all the time against Jinteki. On the right, Chris H. Jinteki. <laughs> Killing it. Killing them all. This is game 22 on your elimination bracket. Chris H. is the second seed. Chris M., the 11th seed. Double Ice Hedge Fund. Sure Gamble. Data Sucker. Sure Gamble. Last Click. Dirty Laundry Archives, which only contain a hedge fund at the moment. Perfectly safe. I'm really not sure how to play against uh, Jinteki Kill deck with a, a criminal deck of any kind. Um, I guess if you have a silhouette kind of deck, you can you can expose so much right, uh, that you know you won't get killed. But how do you expose so much when there's Zaibatsu loyalty in the way? You're really gonna, you know, that you try to expose. You lost a whole expose card, then they they res the Zaibatsu loyalty. They need to run and trash that for four. You try to expose again. It's like, uh, and you lost an expose card already. And if you put that many expose cards in your deck, how is your deck gonna be any good against anything besides a Jinteki kill deck like this with the shell game, right? You have so much expose that expose is probably useless against other decks unless it's silhouette kind of thing. But silhouette's not as good as Andromeda. You can't set up your rig in turn one with uh, drawing nine cards. So here we go. We ran HQ. Eli ran R and D. Pup. Yep, yep, yep. And he's getting punished. He's he's trying to focus on centrals only, because uh, as a criminal, the remotes are much more dangerous than against the shaper of the Deus Ex. And he's getting punished for that uh, right away. You know, you want to focus only on R and D? Okay, I'll score this Gila hands. Uh, Gila hands huge, huge for the uh, for the corp here. You can just take three credits pretty much every turn with only two clicks. So you can you're gonna see him go install Gila hands a lot. Uh, because really one of the things that Criminal can do is account siphon. If he account siphons the corp down to zero credits, exactly. Not one, but zero credits. He can run, he can, so if he goes account siphon, click one, click two, three, and four, he can run all the remotes. Because if the corp has no credits, the only things that can hurt the runner would be Fetal AI, uh, which is an agenda, so it's like, okay, I'll take it. Uh, or a shock. Snare won't go off. Other advanced traps won't go off. They'll all just get trashed uh, immediately. So, you know, if you're running vamp, you can do even better. You know, because the the corp has to be at zero. If they have even one credit, it could be a June bug, right? If they have two credits, it could be a cerebral overrider. Okay, he's going. He's right now. He's just still focusing on R and D only. There's a Yagura now, followed by a pup. He doesn't have a code gate breaker. He took a net damage. Lost an already interface. Paid two to break pup. Saw a card, even though during the Agura subroutine, the corp left the card there. The runner still went and took a look at it. You know, that's a good question. It's like he could have jacked out after the Agura. Not paid two for the pup. Well, paid a net of one. He basically paid two credits. Paid one credit to turn it into a data sucker effectively and saw the card that could have been dangerous. Ooh, look at this card. I forget the name of this card, sorry. Uh, I'll look it up right now, but it's the one that lets you draw four. Uh, you pick one, and then you shuffle the rest back in. It's a pretty new criminal card. Uh, pretty random kind of thing. 
Uh, Express Delivery. Look at the top four cards of your stack, add one of the cards to your grip, shuffle your stack. So the other three cards go back into the stack. Uh, it's really not too bad. It's sort of like, you know, a drawing card, right? It's like if you're if there's a specific card you need and you can't tutor it, especially, you know, you can play Express Delivery. If you haven't seen it yet, it'll probably be in the next four cards. You know, that's not bad odds. And then, you know, you get to keep one of them. It's like a, <clears throat> a super one-shot Mr. Lee for one credit. And this thing's only one influence. It's not a bad idea to put this into other decks. Uh, not at all. I think some people might be underestimating uh, the power of that card. Anyway, he gets a security testing uh, after Jinteki blocks up archives, so he's not going to be able to security testing at a data sucker, but he can still security test for three off of that unadvanced remote. There's not much the corp can do to stop it, but at least uh, he's not accessing that card if you don't want him to access it. He put a little purple thing on the table to signify where the security testing is pointing, and he got a passport, so now he can take care of the Agura. The thing about security testing is you're getting three credits using that every turn for a click, which is amazing. There is no no question that's amazing. Um, but the thing I don't like about it is you're basically, if you use it first thing every turn out of habit, which is not bad, you're losing a click, uh, and against Jinteki, you don't want to run last click, really, right? So what I would do against Jinteki if I had security testing is use my first three clicks as I normally would, and if I didn't have anything to do on my last click, then I would use security testing. Because you never know when you might need to do two clicks and then a run on a third click, right? And you never know what will happen. Whereas here you're wasted, you're using up your first click on the security testing every time out of habit. So he checks the archives, he's willing to go in there. Um, the card he was security testing turned out to be Jackson Howard, which is now gone. Jinteki cleared the archives when the corp said they would go successfully, even if, you know, not caring if the face down card was a shock. The fact that the corp used the Jackson Howard tells you that's got to be an agenda. Maybe a, uh, a future perfect, right? Okay, three remotes. What will you do, criminal? Well, security test one of them. That's what. Security test one of those remotes. At some point, the runner threw out a plascrete. I guess he's betting there's no scorch over there. He's seen influence on Jackson Howard and Eli so far. He's got the corroder. He security tested one of the new remotes. He can break the Eli down. He can he can break pretty much anything now with this fairy. Uh, I mean, he sees every ice on the board is rezzed. But there's nothing to be afraid of, really. I'm sure he's thinking about a siphon because the corp has eight. He just got the corroder. Um, he's got data suckers. He can get through that Eli for two credits. Desperado. It's basically going to cost him a credit, a click, and, and one data sucker net. And then siphon five for ten. And if he's willing to throw out a plascrete, uh, he may be willing to, to float tags if he's willing to get the, um, the security testing trashed. But if you just siphon the corp, literally, you know, that turn... They're not going to have too much money to be willing to spend it on trashing uh, testing. Or will they? Or will they? Okay, an R&D interface comes out. That's risky. Um, you know, He's going to see two cards at a time from R&D, which I guess is good because it's costing him a lot to get in there, so he'll get more for his money. But it's bad because he could see something like Snare Fetal or Snare Snare. It's, it's theoretically possible. You know, there's no cards in the archives right now. There could be all kinds of dangerous stuff uh, in R&D. You know, there might be like three shocks, three snares, three fetals in this deck. No, oh, this first card looks like pup. The second card is House of Knives. All right, well, inside job takes the net damage. It's two to one. Way to go, runner. You're winning.
Hedge fund. All right, yeah, the siphon's not going to be enough to bring them down to zero. Install new ice in R&D. Probably the pup we just saw in R&D. Probably the pup. Right, you got to get five points without dying. Okay, security test that remote again. After drawing a card, two clicks left. Running R&D. It is a pup. So now getting all the way through R&D costs six. Then a data sucker and a desperado. So it costs him five credits to get through. Three ice that are all zero strength and all one to res. Stacked up six credits to run R&D. That is brutal. And he sees two, though. So he's getting his money's worth. Snare on the first... How many cards left in the hand? Two. If that's a fetal, you cannot score. And then the corp is going to draw it. Is it a fetal? What is the next? If it's a snare, it's game over. Oh, it's a Cerebral Overrider. Trash it. Okay. So now we've seen even more influence. Eli Jackson Cerebral. New install. No advancements in any remote so far on the Jinteki side of the board. No Mushin, no Shin. Uh, no nothing. Normally he would advance something like a Junebug or whatever just to see what the runner will do. Will he run it? Will he not? But I guess here it's, it's a full no advance shell game. Maybe just because he's not drawing the cards to advance. If he made that Cerebral got trashed, maybe if they drew it, uh, he would have laid it down. Or maybe he's just waiting for uh, game point. All right, House of Knives comes out. 2-2. Two, two. They have the exact same agenda scored on both sides. Oh, the net damage from the score hit the Parasite. That is nasty. Uh, not too much recursion coming from Criminals. I don't know he's going to get the Parasite back. And it would have been super useful. He could have destroyed the Eli completely, which is pretty taxing. He could have destroyed any of the three ice uh, on R&D, which would have decreased the cost of R&D runs by, uh, by two credits forever. And not only that, but now he's got to worry about this House of Knives going off on any of his runs. You know, he can't run with three cards because it could be House of Knives, Snare, or something. Got to be very careful now. Make sure you count your extra card for the House of Knives. Thinking about it? All right, he's going to draw some cards here. Be careful. Not get killed. Sure gamble. Another new remote. And a Gila Hands. Install, Gila Hands. Install, Gila Hands. Account Siphon comes out on click one. There it is. For the Eli, he's using Data Suckers, two credits. He's gaining one from Desperado. He's gaining one of the two Data Suckers back. He takes five credits away from Jinteki and gains ten credits and two tags. Three clicks left this turn. Click two, Masanori. Why didn't you play Masanori before the Account Siphon? You would have drawn a card off the Account Siphon. But now you're down a card. Okay, uh, did he just draw a card? Or did he... Um, he should have security tested. Gaining credits and a card would have been better. And... Last click running a remote. Last click running. T it's a snare with a house of knives.
Snare with a house of knives. Last click running. Oh, he's letting the snare not be trashed. Because why trash it? Because then it could be Jackson back in. But take a credit scorch. Take a credit scorch. Do not run last click. Do not remain tagged. <laughs> I guess he was betting against the scorch. Bet wrong. If he would have run HQ, maybe he would have seen the Scorch. Don't run last click. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. 